Hi, this is your host Apil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of T4 Let's Talk. And today we have with us Firas Bukarije, CEO of Socket. Firas, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, we were like kind of planning to meet at Open Source Summit and sit down and talk, but that did not work out. But you know, I'm happy that we are able to do it remotely. And there are so many things to talk about. The reason of, the reason I was excited to talk to you was also uh, we never covered this company before Socket before, so I wanted to understand the story. What is your focus area, and you know how old is? So just give us the kind of story, origin story of the company. What do you folks do? Why was the company created? What problem you try, uh, guys are trying to solve here? I was an open source maintainer for most of the last ten years in the JavaScript community, primarily. So I've, you know, one of those people that wrote um, all those NPM packages that are, uh, you know, in, in, in lots of our dependency trees today. And, um, you know, I had a great experience uh, being part of that community and learning how open source works from the inside. And um, one of the things that uh, I learned during my time uh, writing these packages is how uh, wide reaching our dependency trees are. So, um, you know, for example, when you start a new application, uh, it's common to have thousands of dependencies right off the bat, right? And so this is a huge change in the way that we do um, open source and the, the way that we build application, really. And so, um, you know, I had an insight during that time, which was that, uh, you know, this just creates a lot of a risk for us in terms of our supply chains and the, the, the trust that we need to place in all the different individuals that make our open source software. And... Um, you know, this, this sort of new way we open source uh, and application design is leading to more supply chain attacks. Um, and so that's where the insight for Socket came from, because because Socket is is a tool, security tool designed to help teams uh, vet their open source software and catch not just vulnerabilities, but actually malware and other types of supply chain risk uh, in their dependencies. When we look at software supply chain attacks or sub software supply chain security talk a bit about how has open source or the adoption of open source either made it easier for organizations to keep a track of their supply chain because uh, when it comes when it comes to open source proprietary code you know uh, of course monolith is, is different it's only one source here we are not looking at uh, different, you know, packages coming from different projects or different companies, and then there are different libraries, and then there are different dependencies. Uh, even if, you know, the funny thing is, even if you ask, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, if you go to events, go to booth, hey, you know, we have this nice container, you can just spin it up, uh, but they have no clue, you know, all the source that is there in the container, hard links are there, soft links are there. So, so talk a bit about when it comes to security, software supply chain security, how has open source either made it easier or more challenging to keep a track on it? Yeah, I know. I mean, you're totally right. Like, I'm definitely nothing I'm saying is is designed to be a uh, negative statement about open source. Uh, like I said, I love open source, and I was a, a creator of open source for for many many years. I think my npm uh, packages have something like 500 million downloads every month. Um, so I love open source. I, I, I mean, it's amazingly powerful the way that we can collaborate without even needing to really, you know, uh, know the people who are using our code. Um, you know, that's that's the power of it for sure. Um, the 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 risk really comes in when you look at the just the sizes of our supply chains, and this is less to do with open source specifically and more to do with the way that um, of modern um, programming communities work. So if you look at um, the JavaScript community, the Rust community, these newer um, programming language communities have um, a tendency to create really tiny packages, small packages that do one thing well. And what that actually leads to is um, our dependency trees having so many dependencies in them that it becomes kind of hard to um, understand what's happening. Um, the average dependency in NPM has 79 additional dependencies that that, that dependency depends on. So... Uh, you know, you bring in one dependency, you end up with like 80 dependencies in your in your application. So it's like it, it's it's less to do with open source and more to do with again just sort of the, the way we're we're splitting up the code into different dependencies and the and the way that um, it's just a little bit hard to, for teams and developers to kind of keep track of of all this. So, um, but but to answer your question kind of more directly, like I definitely think you know having um, having our software 
dependencies be open source is is way more preferable than having them be proprietary. So absolutely, you know, getting a proprietary blob from somebody that doesn't tell you what it's going to do and you have no idea where the constituent parts came from is is definitely way worse. So with open source, you know, we have the ability to build nice uh, software builds of materials for our for components and put together, um, you know, a nice uh, um, uh, list of, of, of wh where our software is coming from. It's just hard for teams to do that today. That's part of what Socket is trying to address. If you look at this adoption of open source, where almost every company is relying on open source code base, how much understanding do you see that they have about supply chain security? Or you feel when you talk to them, they're like clueless about it and they have no idea. And, you know, and you have to go out and educate them that, hey, you know, just like uh, uh, automobile industry, they should have a very clear visibility of their supply chain. What, what, what are you seeing in the market? I think teams are aware that they should be doing something about open source uh, supply chain security, um, but they don't really know what to do. And I think I've seen a little bit of confusion around, um, you know, what would actually help with the problem. Um, so, so one kind of common mistake I see is um, people think that scanning for vulnerabilities, uh, CVEs, is enough. Uh, and if you do that, then you're, you're safe against uh, these types of attacks and risks. And unfortunately, this just isn't the case. Um, market right now, it's flooded with a lot of vulnerability scan tools uh, and, and tools which focus on these CVEs. And these tools merely look up the packages that you're using to see any vulnerabilities have been reported in these packages. But unfortunately, this this process is very slow and it's too reactive to stop an active supply chain attack. What I mean specifically about that is a packet that gets compromised um, by a, a bad actor and has bad code inserted into it, um, that will go out and people will start to install that. Companies will start to install that uh, a lot of times right away when a developer goes to install that dependency or when a build tooling automatically upgrades the dependency or um, you know when this uh, this makes its way into people's products. Um, and then at some point in the future, the community will learn that this package has been compromised in some way. And it's too late at that point to go and, and, and protect all the apps that had used that dependency. And so really what we're seeing today is the leading organizations are expanding the scope of what open source security means to go beyond just vulnerabilities and to include a holistic defense against supply chain attacks. Uh, and so, you know, again, supply chain attacks are pretty different than vulnerabilities. They involve an intentional um, introduction of uh, a problem into a package, and it's done by an attacker with malicious intent. And unlike vulnerabilities, you don't have uh, time to mitigate them. Uh, with vulnerabilities, often you can wait uh, days, weeks, months sometimes to fix the vulnerability and nobody uh, finds the vulnerability. Now, I'm not saying that's a good idea, but, you know, a vulnerability is like leaving your window open uh, to your house. You know, somebody might, somebody might use that vulnerability to get into your house, but probably not, right? Um, you go for a very long time without anybody exploiting vulnerability. Uh, and then also with vulnerabilities, you have a lot of them which are just uh, uh, very um, uh, uh, low impact and you know, might not even be exploitable in production. And so anyway, what I'm, what I'm getting at is, is sort of we're seeing this sort of shift from just looking at this as vulnerabilities to a more holistic picture. But the problem is that even if a team wants to do the right thing and take a more holistic picture of their supply chain risk, it's really hard to do the right thing. Like it's actually just, um, there's no tooling to, there hasn't been until now, like until Rocket really, there hasn't been tooling that makes it easy to help developers make better decisions about what dependency to use. There hasn't been tooling to surface these risks. And so what we see is like most teams just sort of um, put their head in the sand or just say, you know, I cross my fingers and I hope that, we're not affected by this. Um, and w what's really um, kind of fascinating about it, in, in, in my opinion, is that in the end, what you end up seeing is, is actually a lot of teams scrutinize their um, colleagues' code more than they scrutinize open source code that was written by people, you know, random people on the internet. Um, you see that when code review processes are implemented and, you know, you have to review um, a developer's code before it makes it into um, production or make, before it makes it into the app, and when it comes to dependencies, um, nobody really reviews them. So we just usually see, oh, okay, this dependency was added. And, you know, GitHub and all the popular tooling out there doesn't really show you what is the code in that dependency? You know, what is that code going to do? What other dependencies does that dependency depend on? 
right? And so most teams just sort of shrug and say, okay, yeah, a dependency was added. And they don't even review code at all. They don't even do the most cursory basic checks of that code to make sure that it looks reasonable. And so it's just, it, and again, I'm not trying to blame any teams, it's actually just a really hard problem. And so, you know, for the most part, people are, are, uh, are, are really relieved and really happy when they see, oh, wow, Socket makes this really easy. Um, this is wonderful. So, um, so that's, that's what we've been seeing is we've had to educate a lot of people on the difference between vulnerabilities and, and, and supply chain attacks. And we've given them these powerful tools that actually help them do that assessment in a, in a fast way that doesn't really add more uh, burden or more noise to the developer. Talk a bit about how is Socket helping organizations where security doesn't look like, you know, other intimidating things that they have to do. Plus, you know, as you're also touching upon that, we need to have a holistic view towards security. Otherwise, we'll end up using 50 different solutions for security and we have to also ensure that they should work together. So talk about Socket's approach to make it easier for organizations to focus on security. So the first thing we do is we're extremely developer friendly. So the truth about most security software, I have to say, it's it's typically sold to executives. So it tends to suck to actually use it. Um, in the best case, the software gets purchased and it sits around on shelf. Uh, bothering and protecting nobody. Uh, but in the worst case, it gets deployed and then developers uh, find it extremely frustrating and it prevents them from getting things done. So I would start by saying, so Socket's designed from the beginning to be developer friendly. That's something that uh, our team cares a lot about because we are much more um, coming from the developer side and the security side. Um, so that's the first. The second thing is we're built directly into the GitHub workflow. Uh, the VS Code editor, the CLI, we, we build Socket directly into all the places that the developers spend their time. So this means that it doesn't require them to go use another tool, uh, learn another process. Um, Socket brings the information that's most useful to the developer directly to them um, and then makes it uh, digestible and easy to understand. So for example, um, a developer might use um, a new dependency uh, and Socket will tell them, hey, just so you know, um, you know, that dependency uh, that you installed, you know, it has no updates in five years, right? Uh, okay, so that's good to, good to know before you start building a feature and spend weeks uh, using this open source dependency that's abandoned, right? I mean, that's a very simple example, but good to know that and good to know that proactively, uh, not after the fact, right? Another example, um, say the developer um, is installing a dependency on their command line. They type uh, npm install, uh, you know, foo, and they go to install the foo dependency, but they make a typo, right? They install, actually, they typo it and they install a different package. Now, um, this is pretty, very dangerous, actually, because the, the package manager actually allows the package to run code immediately upon installation if it wants to. And so uh, making a, a single letter typo can actually lead to their uh, developer laptop getting uh, completely compromised by malware. Um, and so this is a... a, a an example where Socket will come in and actually it will stop the installation and just tell them, hey, just so you know, the, the dependency you installed, it's one letter off from a dependency that's much, much more popular. You know, it'll tell them it's 10,000 times more popular and it's one letter different. Are you sure you intended to install this, this package? Um, so again, you can see it doesn't, it doesn't interfere with their workflow unless there's a good reason to, to tell them that information and they're very happy to get that information. Um, and then, um, you know, that's, that's the approach we take throughout the whole product. Um, and I'll just mention one other example. So one common um, thing we see with supply and attacks is when um, a legitimate package or dependency is taken over by an attacker, one of the first things they like to do is to add, you know, additional code that steals information or, you know, does ransomware or um, adds a cryptocurrency miner to steal, you know, uh, system resources and, and mine cryptocurrency. So there's, there's these, these typical kind of pattern that we see when, when a package is compromised, what is the attacker trying to do? Well, they're usually trying to add some of their own functionality into that, into that project and hope that nobody notices for a little while, right? And um, what Socket can do is um, when a developer goes to update their dependencies, um, which they have to do obviously from time to time, um, and they go to make an update, we will highlight for them when the behavior of the package has changed in a significant way. So, for example, if they've been using a package for the last two years and it never needed to make any network requests, it never needed to talk to the internet, right? Now suddenly they're going to update and they're, it's a patch version, a very small update, right? It should be for fixing bugs, making some very small tweaks. 
and we see, oh, wait a minute, you know, it's sending data to the network now. That's a very significant change in behavior that we want to highlight. So that's, you know, it's again, it's a very, it's a very useful piece of information to give the, to the developer that lets them say, hmm, wait a minute, why, why is my dependency behaving this way? Um, and, and we don't block them. We don't stop them from doing their work, but we just let them know. We, we let them know, hey, you know, this is what we observed. Um, and, and, and now at least they have the information to sort of, if, 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 if it does seem out of the ordinary for them to pull the thread and to figure out what's going on here. Right. Um, so it's very powerful. And, and these are just some of the things we do. But, um, you know, we, we think of it like um, the way on a smartphone app, if the app wants to use your microphone or use your camera, right, uh, the developer doesn't just get to do that without asking for your permission. I mean, it doesn't just get to, to release an update that, that steals all your information or, or starts spying on you. But with open source, uh, the way it works today, if a dependency wants to start doing a lot of different behaviors in a new version, um, there's no warning to the developer at all. There's no warning to the, to the team to see this. So that's what we, we see Socket as bringing that type of, of a permit model to, um, to the open source experience and highlighting those changes in behavior. Um, so there's, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the, the feeling. I don't know if that, if that kind of, I covered a diff few different parts of the product, but, but we, we, we see it as basically being very developer friendly, very developer first and um, trying to help them do the job better. Can you talk about some of the use cases? Of course, you may or may not be able to name companies where you can say, hey, these are kind of organizations which are leveraging Socket technologies. Today, uh, Socket is uh, used by over 3,000 organizations and over 150,000 code repositories. And we're protecting all of those organizations from security threats originating in open source. Uh, so even though we're a relatively new tool on the scene, you know, we haven't been around for decades like some of these legacy incumbents, um, we have seen like a very fast adoption of Socket. Uh, and I would say I, 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 I attribute that to really um, a couple reasons. One is that um, the tool is super easy to install. I mean, literally two clicks, right? So it's you go on to GitHub Marketplace, you search socket, it's two clicks to get installed and protect all of your repositories. So the model compared to other security tools is, is much simpler to deploy. Um, and then in terms of the um, the need for the problem, like I mentioned before, companies are really starting to recognize that um, vulnerabilities are not the whole open source security solution, right? Um, and as more teams recognize this, especially with these prominent supply chain attacks and the news that have happened in the last few years, um, teams are looking for, you know, a solution. And when they see Socket, uh, they see the approach, recognize the benefit of the approach, and so they, they install it. So that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing very fast adoption of tool. Um, we also have a very generous free plan, to be honest. I mean, like we, I mean, like I mentioned, we come open source, so we wanted to make this tool very, very accessible to people. And so um, you can get pretty much the whole product for free uh, in the, the, the open source version, uh, the free version. So it's it's really accessible to, to teams in a, in a way that is is really refreshing. How do you see, of course, uh, what we have learned from COVID is don't predict, you know, a lot of times in future, we don't know how things will look like, but where do you see security is moving and how do you see uh, socket is evolving or what are kind of things you folks are working on for the coming months or years? Our focus right now is um, we want to grow and expand to support more ecosystems, uh, more languages, um, more different use cases. So that's a very concrete um, direction we're going. But um, kind of at a, at a, at a bigger picture level, um, I, you know, we, we're seeing the uh, these executive orders from the White House that have come out uh, around supply chain security. I'm sure you, you're familiar um, there's, you know, mandates now to provide S bombs to software that's sold to the government. Uh, so S bombs, you know, software bill of materials. And, uh, this is really shaking up the industry in a way that is very, um, I think very positive, um, for too long companies have been able to sell software to people that contains, you know, really old dependencies, sometimes five, 10 years old, uh, completely unpatched. Uh, and so I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, the government is actually playing a, a decent role, you know, pretty useful role in this in this way to encourage the industry to do the right thing. Um, so so I think you know, I, I think I think we'll see increased adoption of, of um, uh, S-bombs. Uh, but, I, you know, I just I think no one solution is going to solve everything. So, you know, even S-bombs. Right. I mean, it's great to know what open source software you're using. That's wonderful. Um, but the real question is, what do you do with that information? Like, how do you make that useful? And uh, bombs are just the beginning, uh, the, the first step in the process. We need to combine that information with um, more useful uh, 
data about, okay, what are the dependencies doing? What are the risks of each dependency? What is the behavior of each dependency? Um, what is the maintenance status? Who is the creator of each dependency? Um, that type of thing, not just uh, have a big list that nobody looks at. Um, so I, I think it's a very good direction. It's a good start, but we need to keep keep going in that direction and and um, we'll, we'll be much better off if we do. Feroz, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Socket, the whole evolution of you know software supply chain security. And thanks for all those insights and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This was really fun. <laughs>